Earlier we saw how you can create arrays and lists using just a simple syntax where you say array or list followed by parentheses and the contents. That's great if you want to make something that has five, six, maybe as much as ten elements, but that doesn't work very well if you want larger collections. There are methods called fill and tabulate that are kind of the standard ways that we will use to make larger arrays or lists. To see how these work, we could make an array using array.fill. And let's say I wanted to have 100 values. If I wanted an array that's all filled with zeros, I could do that. If I wanted an array, and then let's go with a list, list.fill 100 of random numbers, I could say math.random. The math object has a bunch of helpful methods for you. And there I got a bunch of random numbers between 0 and 1. Okay. Some things to note about fill. Fill is what's called a curried method. So it takes the two arguments as separate lists. Uh, this is a, a general capability that you have in Scala. We'll, we'll talk about it in detail in a few videos. But just to make sure you, you understand, that is intentional. If you try to call it and you pass two numbers with a comma between them or just two values with a comma between them that will have that won't do what you want uh, and most of the time it just won't work there's another detail here about the second argument being passed by name we'll come back and uh, discuss that in a bit but it, it winds up being essential for this second call to function the way that it should so the second argument to fill is just an expression that will be evaluated and it gets evaluated over and over to store the values in here. The thing about using fill is that you have no idea where you are in the collection. Uh, we could highlight this again, list.fill, and I'm just going to fill five here because what I'm gonna do is I wanna take something from input. So I haven't done an import statement here, Actually, let's go ahead and do a read line, so I'll get strings. So this is supposed to fill five values using read line, and then I have to type things in. A, B, C, D, E, F, this is A. Okay, and I get a list that has those values inside of it. Okay. The thing is that while this can be evaluated many times and I can get different values in it, it is not aware of where it is, of what the index is. So for example, when I build this list or when I build this array, the fill doesn't provide in any information about where we are. We could create a var and then have that var be mutated. That would work, but if you need to know something, so for example, I want to have an array where every element is equal to its index. Well, that's where we'd use tabulate. Array. Actually, how about we go with the square of the index? So, tabulate, and I'm just going to make 10 of these. I have to pass tabulate a function. The function takes as its, as its argument, at least if it's a one-dimensional array, you can make two- and three-dimensional arrays this way, in which case there would be more arguments. It takes the index. So, i here is a variable that will be bound to the index of our location in the array, and then if I just want to have that index squared, I could say i times i, and you see here I get an array 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. Okay, so because this has 10 elements, it has indices from 0 to 9, and we got those 9 values squared in there. So if you want to build larger arrays or lists, the way that you will typically do it a lot of the times is using fill and tabulate. Now you probably won't hand type things in all that much. In the case of arrays, you can also use the syntax that comes from Java of calling new. So I can say new, for example, array of int, and then I can pass it how many values I want. Let's go with 20 for this one. Something to note about this, when you use this, all the values come, off, come out in a default value. This doesn't make sense to do with a list because 
making a list of 100 zeros since the list is not mutable is generally not a very useful thing to do. For the array, we could mutate these values. You generally do not call this though, and the main reason why you don't call this is because if I use a type like string and I do this, I get 20 values of null. And null causes all types of, of errors in programming. And so in Scala, we're pretty much going to avoid the use of null as, as much as possible. Anyone who has worked with Java knows that the null pointer exceptions are your most common error. So while this syntax is available to make larger arrays, I strongly recommend that you not use it the majority of time. Instead, use tabulate or fill for making larger arrays and lists.